just in this few months after the show, I have the honor to welcome on the show Mr. Paul. Please allow Mr. I cannot call the name just like that. Allow me. <laughs> Mr. Paul Uwani Bay, the CEO of the group, many things, the group um, Africa Landmark Business in Nigeria. He has many streams of businesses, but he's one person I know that is humble. I have done my research and my, my research has given me this great feedback about you, sir. He's humble, he's energetic, he's adventurous, he has, he's a man of integrity. And I will use the word I was told that your wife calls you. He's the happiest man she has ever known on her. Join me as a welcome into my studio, into my show, Adironke Live Show. My name is Adironke Onikpeje. Join hands with me as I welcome the mighty, the great, the humble man with many feathers on his cap, Mr. Paul Uwanibe. Hooray! That's our welcome on the show, our guest. <laughs> welcome, sir. It's so great to have you here. Thank you so much for honoring my invitation. It's so glad to, to see you live and to meet. He meets with you. I've not met you physically, but he meets with you. And it's, a, it's an honor. Thank you for coming on the show, sir. Thank you. The honor is entirely mine. And um, when you were trying to introduce me there, I was, I was, I was feeling like an Olympic athlete who's just won the gold medal. <laughs> yes, you have. <laughs> you have inspired. Someone called me and said, I don't care. This CV is scary. This CV is just too scary. This, are you sure is is a bona fide Nigerian by blood, by water, by everything? I said, yes, we have. That's why the show is here. We have amazing Nigerians quietly making things happen and bringing life to a lot of people, trying to create opportunities for many people. And Mr. Paul is one of them. And it is greatly an honor, you know, for you to share, come on the, on the show to share your story with us. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So you deserve all the accolades and all the all the tambourine and the praises. You work for it. It's not easy. Running a business in Africa and especially I, in Nigeria. I, I hope my wife is not listening because she she <laughs> won't welcome all that praise. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Madam Madam will understand. Madam will understand. It's not easy. She's been married to you for twenty seven years, and I'm sure there are also years of friendship and all that that, that is involved. So she she will understand much more than we do. So say, share with us. I have people on, online already. Thank you guys for coming online. Thank you, Toby. I see you. I see you, Jediah. I see you, Ronke. Oh, Ronke, my friend from overseas. She's in the US. She's always on the show. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you for coming online. And I, I want Mr. Paul to share with us. I don't want to say all the, you know, all the stories. Let him be the one to share with us. Chata, how has it been for you growing up? Is this what you've always wanted to do? Your journey in business, how has it been? Oh, well, my growing up is a long story, so I'm, I'm going to um, truncate it for you. Um, okay. So uh, my my parents were diplomats, or well, my father was a diplomat. My my mom works with the BBC. And um, oh. there were seven in the UK at the time I was born, so I just happened to be born in the UK. But my father being a real Nigerian, um, I did my infancy years in the UK, and at the age of 10, my father felt I should go to secondary school in Nigeria. So the first time I, I walked into Nigeria was when I was shipped off to boarding school at what was then Federal Government College Lagos, now known as Eugenic. Okay, um, so my, yeah. Uh, my brother and I were shipped off there at the age of 10. The first couple of years are quite difficult. Um, obviously, um, Nigeria being Nigeria, just getting sort of used to it for coming from, from London. Um, but um, after after a few years, by the time I got to my third year, fourth year in secondary school, in those in those days they counted them in year one, two, three, four, five. I didn't know what they're yeah. equivalent to now. I, I hear they go up to thirteen now. Basic. But, uh, they use basic now or something. Yeah. Or great. So, not sure. Yes. So so after I got to my secondary school YEC time, took the exams, managed to pass, and I thought to myself, I like this. You and managed to thought, pass. <laughs> <laughs> managed to pass i thought i liked it i wanted to stay in nigeria but my parents had other thoughts so i had to come back to the uk to do my a levels um because they had the school they wanted me to attend and they felt i must attend that school so i, I did that um, but once i finished my a levels i 
I came straight back to Nigeria, to University of Nigeria, did a degree in architecture. Um, so I spent a good six years there, a BSc and a master's in architecture. Did my youth call in JUS, had a great time, and then got shipped mm. out again, came back to the UK, worked with an architectural practice to get my RIBA letters. Um, at the time I realized, before I finished my architecture degree, I realized that I didn't really want to be an architect. Um, mm -hmm. I liked I liked buildings, but I didn't yeah. necessarily like architecture. Mm -hmm. um, the yeah. painstaking architecture um, course. So, so I, I working with the architect, um, I decided I wanted to do sort of construction management and get into project management. So I, yeah. I then, um, I, I did a course, a master's in, in construction management at the Imperial College. Um, finished that, uh, moved from the architectural practice, worked with a property development company for quite a few years, and then realized I wanted to sort of manage it. I just, I liked the way it felt. Um, so I did an MBA at the London Business School and then moved to a company called Regis. At the time I moved to Regis, there were seven of us that worked in the organization. It was one of the okay. fastest growing organizations in the world at the time. I mean, this guy who started Regis, his name was Mark Dixon. He he had a he had a view to change the way people worked in the world, and he was he was focused on it. He was a serial entrepreneur. So during that seven year spell, he grew that company to employ over six thousand people in one hundred sixty two countries, and floated it. Started it with two hundred thousand euros and floated it for one point four billion dollars seven years wow. later. So it was quite a journey, and it was yeah. something I enjoyed, and um, I learned a lot during that time. And um, so after it floated. I decided to leave and start my own company, and that's how we found ourselves starting Landmark. Um, yeah. all, all my life, I've done property. Everything yeah. I know is property. Um, so not just the servicing of the property, but the, the drawing of it, the developing yeah. of it, the selling of it, and the managing of it. So, so I started Landmark in the UK as, as a property service company, and we spread to seven different European countries. So we worked in Germany, in Spain, in France, in Belgium, in America, in New York, um, and then in 2003, I, I linked up with some of my old friends from UNN yeah. and decided to bring Landmark to Nigeria. At the same time, we thought, because I'd, I was used to working in different countries, I thought this is the time to come to Africa generally. So we set up in South Africa in the south, well, Johannesburg in the south, Nairobi in the east, Lagos, yeah. which we, was okay. western, northwest, yes, and Cairo was the destination in the north. And that's how Landmark basically started. But very early in that pr process, we realized you needed control of property to service and manage property. So, so we started our property development company and, and here we are today. There are many things about the African market that has shaped the way we've yeah. created it. So that's a snapshot of- Among, what, among all this, um, in this your serial journey from U in the UK to Nigeria, back to UK and all that, and you know, trying to fulfill a purpose. You parents wanted you architecture, you found that along the line, you know, was it when you were serving in just that you realized that you wanted more about the buildings, you know, the business of building and property? Was it why you were serving? No, in all honesty, um, serving was a holiday. Um, um, it was, it was in architecture school. You see, architecture school is quite long. It's a six year, seven year course. Yeah. And, and halfway through architecture school, that, I realized- that's the shocking thing that, medical seem longer but many people don't know that architectural actually seems longer yeah. than, than you know than than many many know many don't know that that it's a long course yeah very long course and um, it wasn't my, fun or what well in my mind i just didn't think the course needed to be that long but i'm, I'm glad it was because what it does do it weeds out the chaff you know they've always said and my, and my parents used to say this to me education is about discipline it's not about knowledge mm -hmm. um so as long as you can be disciplined enough to see it through, pass your exams in flying colors and dedicate yourself to something, whether you like it or you don't like it, it's it's a mirror of the rest of your life. And then when I came out of education, I realized just working that it's not every boss you work with you like, it's not every colleague you like, it's not every office you'd like to work from, it's not every seat you sit on that you'd like, but um, just having the discipline to allow yourself to go through some of the pains and the inconveniences, right, to, to pursue a dream is important um, because the bigger the dream, the harder it gets and the more discipline required. So education is a good start. So I realized probably my third year, halfway through architecture school that I didn't like the detail of architecture. Um, I didn't feel I was 
I was creative graphically, but I felt I was more mentally creative, and I I wanted to, I wanted the more um, the more physical part, physical of part. creativity than yeah. the paper. Yes, than the paper. You know, because uh, you know, uh, you I spent a long time, you know, detailing sort of kitchens, toilets, window sills. But you know, the people, the architects amongst us will will understand what I mean. It's it it's tough. It's tough, mm -hmm. but it's enjoyable. If you, it's like being an artist, and mm -hmm. you know, the great thing about architecture is you commit something to paper, and one day you open your eyes and it's standing in on soil, and people are mm -hmm. using it and utilizing it, and and it's it's very rewarding to see that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's fantastic. I like I like the way you explained it. That you know, along your journey, your third, your fourth year, you was you wasn't you were more fun with the mental work of it than the paperwork. And but you had to discipline yourself to you know to understand and to go through it. And that's a lesson you just gave us that we might not like the seats. I like as 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 simple as you said it. You might not even like the seats you sit in the office. You might not even like your colleague, but there's a goal. And that goal has to be achieved, achieved, and you need that discipline to achieve that goal. Thank you. Thank you for that insight. That. So whatever process you're going through right now, look at the goal. Don't mind, you know, the inconveniences. Discipline has to come into play, you know, for you to achieve it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. For that. So share focus, with us. So focus, when on you now, focus on your destination. On your destination, not, yeah. Not the journey. It drives you, motivates you to keep going. Yes, I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. So when you realize that um, now it's more about the mental, that you enjoy the mental work, you enjoy, you know, the people side of it now, you know, and all that. So where where did you now connect, reconnect back to that? Where were you able to put the peg in the hole, you know, to reconnect that for you? Well, there's, you know, in life, there's a period of discovery. Um, yes. So one thing I knew I was always going to remain in what we call the built environment. So the built environment is, 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 uh, well, in, in universities, it's a department, right? Or a faculty, mm -hmm. which includes yeah. architecture, surveying and, and all the other sort of build. So I always knew it was going to be about bricks and mortar and people. Um, but what I was going to do within that environment was something that evolved over time. Um, and through the journey, as I said, I worked with an architectural practice because after six years in architecture, I felt I should get my letters, my professional letters. So to do the professional exams, I had to work for three years. And because I came to the UK, um, I chose an architectural practice where where one of the partners was was sat on the RIBA board. RIBA is yeah. British Architects. So oh. to give me, yeah, to give me a very good like chance, you know, I made a first class in school, so it was fairly d easy wow. to 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 get. And I was lucky as well, you know. You know, and one thing I've learned like is, is luck okay. is a big part of it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was easier to get a job than it would have been um, just because I had academic credentials. And if any students watching this, I said, I tell my children, I said, whatever you do, try and always do your best because it may be one year later, maybe 10 years later, maybe 50 years later, but it will reward you. Um, and anything that you don't do your best that, that ends up either being okay or mediocre, can never really be used as a stepping stone to something else. Stone. True, yeah. true, sir. So, thank you so, for thank you for that. Yeah. So always yeah. be your best at anything, anything you find your hand. To, whatever your hand it is to, you do. And, you and, and in life, you know, it's it takes as much effort to do things very well as mm -hmm. as it does to do to things badly. Do anything, yes. True. Yeah. I totally agree, sir. I totally yeah. agree. My, the, my the, own... time, the energy is the same. So why don't you just do it well? Yeah, my old boss used to say to me, um, um, if you get out of bed in the morning, you go through all this hassle coming to work, um, then you might as well work when you get here, <laughs> right? Yeah. There's, yeah. there's, there's, yeah. No, there's yeah. no need to turn around because if you are doing nothing, you are still you still use the same energy to get here. You're going to use the same energy to go the back. Energy. No. Yeah. So make a difference. So why don't you just do it and get, you know, get rewarded and feel good about it? Absolutely. Be a part of that change. Be a part of fulfilling purpose. Yeah. Thank no, you. You hit the nail on the head to be a part of the change you want to see. Yeah. 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 Thank you. I like that. Sir. I like I like how you, those principles have guided you. So when yeah. you now when you now partnered, you mentioned your old friends that you met and you yeah. now had to you know partner with them and now open branches for the landmark group in the west, the east, in the you know, in the north of Africa. These are friends. These are friends that were old friends. How yeah. are you were, were there people that they we could still vouch for? You know their their values, your you, you know their principles. You've not seen them in a long while, or you were connected already. 
Well, some were connected and some were not. But but um, but you know, the truth in life is is we all have many friends. We have the good, the bad, and the ugly. And somewhere in us, we know the ones that are good, and we know the ones that are okay, and we know the ones that are ugly, and we we know the ones that are dependable. So you know, mm -hmm. a lot of the friends I have today are friends I developed in my youth. And, you know, I've always said to people, your relationship, a lot of people count their wealth by how much money they have in their bank accounts. But, you know, most people who understand life count their wealth by the relationships they have. And then when you form good relationships, it's important to, to, to nurture them and just make sure that you're dealing with like-minded people. So it's not just having a good friend, but, you know, you have friends that when you want to go and party, you have friends. When you want to read, you have friends. You know, when you yeah. want to go home to your mother, right? You know who you take to your house yeah. and who you know, right? So, yeah. so we know who our friends are. And if you're going to start a business or do something serious and deep, then you need to join up with the friends that you can take home to your mother, right? Mm. <laughs> um, mm. so, so some of my friends I kept in touch with. There are many friends that I, I didn't, that I, I renewed acquaintances Um um, as we as we met along, and some people change and some people don't. But fundamentally, most people deep inside are the same they were when they were mm. very young. Um, I'm, you know, this not everybody believes this, but I'm not a big believer in in. There's something called DNA, and DNA doesn't change. Yes, your attitude towards things can change, how you view life can change, your bank balance can change, but who you really are, what you are, um, it's unlikely to change. First one, true. That you just I had to I had to even explain me <laughs> keep making sounds because I was just getting a deep picture of what you were saying in my head, trying to you know put you know pictorials and all that. And I totally agree with you that you can have all friends, like you said, but you will know the type that is for business because business is deeper than the party, than the laughing and all that. That's that's a very deep insight for everyone to note. And like you said something, you said. For business, it has to be that friend that you can take to mama. Yeah. Please explain. Yeah. Explain why you said that part. So I, I so I, that's that's pr I'm talking probably about reliability, yes, and authenticity. So so you know th there's some people who are more authentic than others. Um, sure. If you're in a spot of trouble, there's certain phone numbers you will call, and there's some you won't. And it doesn't mean those are better friends or you've known them that longer. Is than the others, but you know, reliability is important. And you know, I and my friends know this, and my colleagues know this. You know, one of the one of the things I hold dear in my life is loyalty. But I, you know, loyalty is everything. It's a, it's sure. it's the platform for everything. And once you are loyal, yes, um, it, you have the basic ingredients to to develop any sort of friendship. Yes, and because loyalty is the number one ingredient in friendship, and that's what I mean. What you can take home to mama, it's all about. You know, people who have values, who have the right ideology, who have manners, who respect everybody, manners. whether whether yeah, whether the person is is a support worker or an executive, they respect them the same way, um, and they respect human principles, and and um, they they continue to learn. You know, it's important. Humility is an important um, ingredient of progress. Um, so mm. you know, loyalty for me is is one of the is one of my top um, tick tick boxes. Um, oh, thank you. All, all, all you just said now would would have needed to pay like uh, millions of naira to listen to you share this deep talk with us. I'm so grateful. Thank you, sir. You said you spoke about loyalty. You spoke about you know you know dependability. You have to be reliable for you. You know for someone to go into business with you. You know, like you said, it's not like you're comparing them or which one is better. It's about which one fits the purpose at that moment. You know, who can you call when you need, you know, that particular incident? And thank you. Thank you for those insights, sir. And I also I like you, that you mentioned... I'll tell you a, short, I'll tell, I'll tell you a very short story. There's a yes, friend sir. of mine. Um, so when I came back to Nigeria newly, um, so it was probably a couple of years after, and, you know, I reacquainted with a lot of my friends. And um, so a friend of mine got got stuck on Falamore Bridge at about 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. in the morning. And if he's wow. watching if he's watching this show, he remember this th that day. <laughs> and and he had no one to call. His car was broken. Um, and he picks up the phone, he calls me, and I answer the phone. And he said to, he said to me, at look, 2 Paul, at 2 a.m., he said, Paul, 
I'm, I'm stuck on Fallon Bridge. I'm in the middle of nowhere, right? There are all sorts of people sort of hovering around and he's in trouble. I said, why did you call me now? Am I a policeman? He said, he said, he said two things. One is you will answer the call because I know your phone will be on. And then the second is that you will listen to me. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, that, that's amazing. And, and actually from my research, those were the things that were said about you. They said you carry other people's problems on you. You try to make everybody see that they can be better than where they are, and you you just you just always want to help. That in every little way, you always feel that life is is all about support for each other, and that is one thing I pray that every one of us can learn from and keep doing. Please do not relent, sir. You know I don't even need to tell you this because I was told that even with all you've had a, a few stories here and there, but you keep you keep. You don't you don't you don't use this as a prejudice you keep doing it and you keep riding on and i'm not shocked why the lord is helping you to move very well in your business thank you for those insights sir. on and that that part that you also mentioned about dna people can change attitude towards things but their dna is still their dna is the same it doesn't change so we should learn from that especially for those that want to go into marriage hoping that the person will change so now, which brings me to you, to you, to yours. With all this, with all of this, how were you able to build a home? Because you have so much business that you you have you ventured into. You're a risk taker. You you know, you're adventurous. How were you able to, you know, take this woman along on this journey and build a home for twenty seven good years, sir? Twenty seven. Yeah. So so yes, it's it's a long time, but you know. It's easy to look back and and form my own story, but but the truth is, um, life is a series of of planned accidents. If if I could if I could use that term, um, yes, so so um, my wife is a medical doctor. At the time, she was in university. She was finishing her university, and just when they finish medical school, they do a year out with um, with practice. Hmm? Mm. And so she came over to London and to do a year out. So one of my cousins was living with me at the time. And he was doing that same year out, and he was her classmate basically in school. So she used to come and see him, and they used to sort of study together. And that's basically how how I met. I mean, in terms of you know, in life you meet a lot of people. And and when I was when I was much younger, I was quite playful. And there was a time I said to myself, you know, um, so it was earlier than most of my friends. I said, I'm going to sort of settle down soon. Right? Um, I'm too playful. Um, and and um, so the time was right. So I I met someone. That, we, that I clicked with at the time when I was ready to settle. And I assume uh, she met me at the same sort of time for, for her. She was very young, by the way. Um, I say to my daughter that now that your mother was married at, the at this age. <laughs> so, so, uh, but um, yeah, so, so time went and, when, and we're, not, we're not similar. We've got very different personalities. Um, and I think, I think relationships are not about, about matching they're they're more about understanding tolerance and and just having having personalities that work together they don't you don't have to be the same as a matter of fact many people say that same personalities don't actually work but personalities that can actually into interwind is a safer bet um to to work so you know as i said life is a series of accidents so there's no there's no grand plan I might just happen to be in this place. And throughout the last, I would say the last 30 years of my life, I've, I've worked very hard. Um, so I've traveled a lot. This is the longest time I've spent at home in the last 30 years. Wow. Yeah. wow. I'm sure Madame will be so happy and so like, <laughs> thank you for being uh, Give a special bunch of flowers to COVID and say thank you, Olga is like right in the house. I was just about to ask that, that she has a medical profession, which is also very taxing, time consuming as well. And you're a businessman, you are everywhere because about when it comes about buildings, you have to be there many times, you know, to make sure that, um, you know, the principles that you've, you have should be followed through and all that. And I wanted to ask that there definitely there will be times that you'll be gone for long. How do you, how do you reconnect with the kids, you know, and still let the daddy's role not be, you know, void. How do you do that? I, you can, you are even saying that in 30 years is the longest that you spent at home. Just let's, lockdown was in March, 
you are just a new August, so just like four months. No, I know. And the reality is I didn't spend all lockdown at home. Um, so I, I I I traveled, I spent half of my lockdown in Lagos and the other half in, in London. But um, okay. I mean, just in terms of the um, connection, I, you know, I always say to people, I think it's important to be who you are all the time, who you are in front of your kids, who you are in front of your colleagues, who you are in front of your your siblings, who you are in front of your wife who, or husband and who you are in front of your your own, your parents, um, I think, and friends, it's important. That way you don't have to act. Um, and, you know, the great thing about kids is is they learn from people. And whether a kid has met you once or met you a hundred times, um, they tend to they tend to remember and stick to certain things. Um, so, so you know, one of the things you know, people often ask me if there were three big lessons you can give to people, what would they be? And one of the lessons I always say is be a lifelong student. Be curious. You know, remain curious all your life. Tr read. Try to find out more things. Just be a student all the time. And, Keep learning. You know, and that's the great thing about kids is because invariably they're students. So they're always learning. Um, and yeah. we, you know, I know you have children. So when your babies grow up, you, you can see they're very curious. You shine a light, you touch something. Yeah. yeah and, and um, you know, so it's, it's, it's very, it's very, very important. So I, you know, I will go away. I'll come back. Um, I'm with my, I, I talk to my kids the same way as I talk to my parents and the same way as I talk to my team. Um, if you speak to my colleagues at work, um, they will they will tell you um, I I try to be myself all the time and I try to be friendly. You know I think it's important to build relationships. So so in the sh few times or the short times I have with my kids, I I believe I I build relationships. I haven't been the best father in the world because I haven't been around all the time. You know um, I think from memory I think I was I was in the football stadium when when my daughter was born, but I named her after my football team as a result. But um. <laughs> What team, what team do you support? What team? Um, um, the team that that happens to have one of the um, one of the <laughs> one of the one of the trophies in the UK at the moment. The best team in the UK. I I just knew you had to be Arsenal, and you <laughs> better not both say the name on time. <laughs> and it took well, you guys years um, to get the trophy. It took you guys like forever to finally well, get one. I'm glad. I'm glad you know. But um, just to correct you, by the way, Arsenal has okay. has won four four trophies in the last six years, more than any oh. other team in England. Uh, but 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 you know, you guys know, you guys you guys know how to 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 give up and to dash it and to break it in pieces. Yeah. You know? I see a lot of people that have have become into into the United. You know, I stand with United. I'm United <laughs> fan, and I stand with United. <laughs> so I. Uh, uh, is, is allow, let's allow you to enjoy the, the victory for this moment. It's okay, it's well, fine. Well, that's okay. Fine. It's fine. By and large, every year we enjoy some kind of victory. Um, we're, we're not as good as we used to be, but you know, those times are coming. Thank, you, thank God you know. Thank God. Thank God you know. You see, your, your friends are shocked that you're actually an Arsenal fan. Seriously, Arsenal. <laughs> yeah, they know. I'm sure they, I'm sure they all know. And, and Leonard, who's shouting, knows I'm an Arsenal fan. <laughs> but it's good to know. So it's good to know. It's good to know. So tell, tell. You have shared with us, you know, you know, parenting and all sports of the family and all that. She will share with us with business. You know, like you said, you. I like the word you called your staff. You call them your colleagues. You know that you you try to build relationship in Nigeria. Building your your kind of business has it been palatable? Has it been easy for you on this journey? Is, was it was it what you expected? How have you been able to manage all the challenges? So a tough one, you know. So landmark, basically, I, I told you we turned in from landmark global and we rebranded we landmark Africa because we were trying to create new experiences in Africa. And over the last sort of five to ten years, we've evolved from being just a solely property development company to one that creates a sort of unique business um, ecosystem of sort of business leisure and lifestyle. Um, so we we create destinations and places that are almost like a melting pot where people are meant to come and meet um, and our number one principle is not necessarily like a property a normal property developer your number one principle is to rent your space out to someone our number one principle is to is is to bring people together our currency is footfall is the number of people that come to our sites our currency is not the amount of naira or dollars that they spend um, so you know last year alone we had 2.6 million customers 
um, wow. within, the, within the landmark um, environment. And, and the more people that the brand touches, um, I think the healthier as a business we will be. Obviously, this pandemic um, brought mm. challenges of its own. Um, it's presenting the world, yeah, yeah. with with a, a dynamic and unprecedented situation. You know, it has immediate and far-reaching consequences. We're, we're even yet to understand the impact of um, on the communities across the globe, especially those of the most vulnerable. And and you know, we we haven't been. We're not an exception to that because um, because our whole business is about bringing people together as the as the pandemic started, obviously our business had to shut down. The social distance with social distancing norms, we we preached no. exactly the opposite. So you know, for the last five months, you know, we've been basically more or less shut. We're we're literally just about to start, start turning that corner. So things have been tough. But you know, one thing I will say in life is, is at any point in time, nothing's easy, right? And if it's too easy, there's something wrong, or there's something waiting for you around the corner. So, you know, when, you know, and, and another thing my mom used to say is that when the going gets tough, the tough get going, right? Yeah, so, yeah. so you have to find ways to unwrap challenges because inside every challenge, there's an opportunity. Sometimes it's so deep that you have to stay at it for a long time. Um, sometimes it's quite shallow. So you, are, you take the first layer of the challenge off and you yeah. see the opportunity. But the one thing you must have to change a challenge into an opportunity is staying power. You must have belief yeah. and you must stay in power as i said to you um the only thing i know is property um so uh, because the only thing i know is property um i have to stay with it right so over yeah. over time things will grow things will change but you know it's it's been it's been a quite a an an interesting an interesting journey um yeah. and, you thank know, you that, that, yeah. that, that will lead me to the next question when you talk about sometimes you have to stay on that challenge because it keeps it can open more opportunities. Mm -hmm. When do you let go? When do you, when do you, from your experience in business, when do you say, okay, I've stayed too long on this thing, it's not working, I need to give up, or should you rebrand it, or should you, what do you do? When you can see that time, energy, everything has been put, you've done everything, but it seems not to be. Well, there's, there's no such thing as doing everything. Um, you know, so there are two types of challenges. And, okay. and it's important to have the wisdom to know the difference. Um, they're the challenges that you can control, yes, by whatever, hard work, brain science, you know, inter intellect, wisdom, advice, or whatever, the, the, they're challenges you can control. And they're challenges you can't control. So, you know, the rain, for example, the weather is a challenge you can't control. All you can do is plan on how to mitigate that challenge, right? So if it's raining, you know, take an umbrella, right? Or, or, or close your window or whatever the, whatever challenge the rain causes you, you can mitigate against it, right? And the challenges you can control. The ones you can control is what you have to focus on. Um, uh, so I've spent all my life focusing on the challenges that you can control. I've never really liked, and, and I think my colleagues as well will tell you that I'm very impatient with people who, who complain about things that are outside our control. You can't complain about a tenant that's doing something that you can't change. You can only change the way that tenant thinks about you, Thanks. right? Um, so it's important to focus your efforts on, on the challenges you can control. Yeah. And, and um, you know, we were all born naked, yes? Yeah? So we were all born yeah. with nothing, right? We all okay. came to the world with nothing. No matter whether our parents were rich or poor, we came the same way and we'll go the yeah. same way. Right. Yeah. And, and whatever you've achieved in life till date, yes, most people, 90% of that achievement is down to how they've run their lives. Right. Yeah. So whether it's how you were guided in youth by your parents or whether how you've guided yourself as an adult, um, at least 90% is down to you. Right. Yeah. Those who are who think they're unlucky are unlucky because of the things that they haven't done that they could have done at certain times. Right. It could have been school. It could have been bad friends. It could have been bad habits. I mean, it could, it could be anything, but we have to take responsibility for the situation we find ourselves in. Um, so, so I, I mean, I, I would say, you know, yes, we have gone through a lot of challenges and, you know, I, I don't, I'm not frightened of a challenge. And sometimes you go through pain, it reminds you you're human um, sure. and, it's, and it's important and it keeps you, keeps you level on the ground, but you know, God rules in the affairs of man. And, sure. the, and, and the reality is, is what will be, will be but you have to play a part in trying to make what would be to be. Yeah. To be, I like that, I like that. Because I'm, I'm, I'm not so into the principle of what will be, will be. 
like you just said, you have to play your part, then make what will be to be. I like that. Thank you, sir, for saying that. I have another question, but before that, let me let me allow um, this doctor friend of mine from, he's in Argentina, he's asking this question. He said, from your experience, what's your outlook to employing indigenous experts or skilled labor in your project executions? Well, the people who know me, so, so I've, I've run a business in, in seven countries in Europe, um, in America, and in, in 13 different African countries. And, and every time I've always started with, for, for, for a start, I draw a professional line. It's important to always employ a professional, right? Whatever it is you're doing, unless it doesn't require a professional. So I don't do things on a clan basis. I wouldn't say I'm gonna I'm going to take my friend or, or my cousin or, or my children or anything. You, you have to be good at what you do and you have to be able to do it, right? Um, but my first choice is to give people a break. So I like, first of all, the first one is young. I like young people because I think young people do need help um, mm. and, and they do need ambition and drive and, and just having an opportunity make make a huge difference in in their lives my break came from somebody so mm. it was an opportunity that i was given and i grabbed it with both hands um, but if i wasn't given that opportunity i may have had a very different journey to life yes um, i may have gotten to where i am today but it may have been a very different route yes. yes so um so my first box i tick is young the second box i tick is people like me um, and you can read, you can read in it what you like. But you know, in this era, in this sensitive era of Black Lives Matter, I'm not talking about. I'm not necessarily going to talk about color. But um, I want people of of the sort of experiences I've had. Yeah. So you know, being African helps. You know, being Nigerian helps. Being black helps. Um, pursuing a dream helps. Being brought up through a certain educational discipline and and moral code helps. Um, so so I will always look at look at that. Um, so I give those opportunities, and when we're when 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 we're running our business full time in Europe, um, I I was a, I had a very strong bias for for African businesses or African mm -hmm. support. So whether it's my accountant um, or lawyers or the builders, um, I always try to use Africans. Many mm -hmm. disappointed, and many were excellent, and the excellent ones I'm glad to say have gone on to do tremendous things, and the oh, people wow. who who disappointed. You know, have ended up in in a way that they were always going to end up because they took a short term view. They thought they got the job because of a friendship or because yeah. of something, and never really took it seriously. And if they did that to you, I mean, you said something at the beginning of the show. Um, I've forgotten. Yeah. There's there's an evil phrase about it. Um, there's an evil phrase that says, and I I know people want me to say it in evil, but I wouldn't say it in English. That if you don't, <laughs> well, why don't you want to say it in Igbo? I would love to hear it. <laughs> if you, because you've been speaking English all through the show, uh, I'll speak. I'll say it in English. But it says basically, if you, if you don't know what killed the father, am I still on the show? Someone is frozen. It's either me or you. Well, Can you hear me, sir? Okay, we had a little break there. No, it's okay for you to speak it, sir. Okay, so it says basically. Can you hear me? I can hear you, although it looks like you're frozen, but I don't know whether it's you or me. Hello, Mr. Paul. Wow, can you hear me? Hello, Mr. Paul. Yes. In the network, is playing funny at his own end. Is it my end? Hello. Oh, wow. Well. If the guys out there can see me, someone send me a message. I'd like to know whether it's me, my end or not. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. You're back, yeah. Let's talk to... there. Yes, yes, it's fine. Okay. Please go ahead, sir. All right. So yes. you can speak it in Igbo. <laughs> I'll stick to I'll stick to English for the time being, but um um I will I will see, yeah. 
Okay, so, okay, sir. Okay. so so basically um it says it says if something kills the father and you don't find out what it is, it will kill the son. Yeah. Okay. And what, what that basically means mm -hmm. is that if you're treated in a certain way, um if someone treats someone else in a certain way, they're likely to treat you in the same way. So imagine you're getting married and the counterparty has left their husband or their wife and they've done terrible things, yes? And you think, well, that was them. This yes. person's not gonna treat me like that. You will be treated the same way, by the way. You, you will, it will eventually come, mm -hmm. right? And so people generally are like that. They don't necessarily change their DNA. So I, I think, I think yeah. in life it's important, yes, to, to figure yeah. out some of your principles and live with some of those principles, but don't take on people who have treated other people badly, expecting them to treat you well. True, 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 true. Yeah. We are together, I, we can hear you, sir. Okay, and I I will say it, I will say it in Igbo next time. Because now they are challenging you. Someone just said that you should you should accept that you can't your Igbo, Igbo is not uh, who someone mentioned that he's one of your friends. <laughs> I'm trying to get the person's I'm trying to person, the person's name. He said, uh, okay, Mr. Oscar. He said we know we know we know your Igbo is not the most fluent. Oh no. <laughs> so he has challenged you. Well, well, you, you use the word friends. Um I, so I I'll deny him, I'll deny him life and say he's he's not a friend. <laughs> if if you can say if you can say that online. <laughs> but um I will I will challenge him next time I speak to him to speak Igbo because I spoke to him yesterday, by the way, and he didn't speak Igbo, not one word of it. <laughs> I like that. I, I like I, I I I like that. I like that. So Mr. Oscar, you have been denied on a live show online program that you're no longer mr false friend because you could do this to him online so he also is the same back to you i i quite understand so thank you so much for that for explaining why you know you you prefer professionals even though you have your criteria you know to work to work with that's that's fantastic so so share with us as as um you you had a very great feedback record in numbers last year. Now COVID happened this year. In all of your journey, as we are rounding off, we have a few minutes left. In all of your business journey, you are building a dynasty, you are building an empire of businesses. And you you have, like you said, I like the fact that Landmark is not just an event place. It has other, other, other outlets that it's into, you know, building people, bringing people together and trying to, you know, put life to a meaning for them. So, in all of this, are you the one managing all of this together or you have trusted, you know, colleagues that you put in places of position? And why why do you do that? Why not? Because the African thing, we we, we are so scared of partnership. We want everything to ourselves. You know, why why do you have people, you know, managing the other outlets? Or are you doing it together? Have you been able to put everything together if you have? Well, I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that... Um... A very small percentage of what I've achieved is down to me. As I said to you, you know, um, and the people around you matter a lot. Your friends, your family, um, and you know, colleagues, teachers, everything matters a lot. So, so over time, because I've worked in so many different countries, and, and Landmark has been a multi a multi country organization, um, I've I'm used to having partners and and having competent competent managers who who have the wisdom and intelligence to do what's best for the organization. Um, and so far, you know, again, I'll say, I'll say we're lucky um, in many ways because um, I have a lot of, of, of team members and colleagues that have stood up, especially at a time like this. I mean, even during this, this time, we created a war team in, in Landmark and, you know, we had 1,200 people working in our ecosystem that literally had to go home. Wow. Um, so we, we wow. a small number of people um, created the war team and and they bit effectively have run landmark for the last four to five months and um, the job that they've done is nothing short of, of brilliant um, I think I think um, it's the number one rule in life is try to get the right people get through the door um, so many people think yeah. it's all about how you sort of keep people but at the end of the day if you get the right people in if you watch your front door get the right people in and watch your back door so the right people don't leave then by and large you'll be a successful leave. Vision, yes. Um, 
you know, but it's important to see the difference because we all make mistakes. You will hire the wrong people sometimes and they may not be bad people, but they not be right for your organization. Um, but, you know, talking about partnership, I think partnerships is important. It's a big principle of mine. I think together you're always stronger. I remember the days I used to go to South Africa a lot and it was in the South African airport. There was a big banner. Um, it said, if you want to go far, uh, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Um, but that whole principle of partnerships is important, but you choose your partners carefully. It's important to choose okay. people who are like you and who, who think like you, who have your own morals and your own ethics and um, who wouldn't let you down. Um, you know, people who take relationships as, as a currency and it's, it's very important. So a lot of my friends, especially my close friends and colleagues, my relationships are incredibly important. I will do anything for them mm. and I like to believe they'll do anything for me. Mm, fantastic. Thank you so much. You, you've shared great insights, things that you, you should be on the next TED, TEDx or what's that um, program for, for the youth and the young minds. And these, these are insights that um, I, I say it with all humility and responsibility that you people will pay a whole lot to hear this nugget. They'll pay a whole lot. And we are having it on just a free platform and I, I so much appreciate that and thank you thank you so much because you just you just mentioned something very critical and i like that you said that keep the front door you know watch the front door so that the wrong people don't get in and the back door be careful so that the, the good ones don't leave i've never heard that before I'm just hearing that for the first time and it's it hits me well it's me very well and i hold it tight and strong thank you so much for that i'm, I'm grateful thank you so like, as we round off what has been amazing in your in your because I've seen that your 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 business trend, your business um, experience and all that has been like process. Don't you get don't you get eager to get results? How do you post? You know, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. How do you post? Because we have the young ones these days, they want to make the money fast. You know, you talk about professionalism, you talk about knowledge. You said you're, you you can't you've stayed with what you know, which is property. You've stayed with it. You talk about knowledge. You talk about you know being disciplined. You know staying true to to the goal, looking at the goal. You know these are principles that we are kind of fading away in our generation because everybody wants it fast, fast, fast. And like you said, you're taking time to get to the office with the rigors of traffic and all that. Why don't you just do your best when you get there? So that all the time you know use will not be wasted so share with us you know in your in, in your world share with us in your experience that this process does it does it warrant you is it is it rewarding enough for you to go through all of this yeah well i i think i think reward is is something that was very personal many people do things for love many people do mm. things for money many people do things for friendship many people do things for assets mm. So you've got to figure out why you're doing something and choose what your reward is. But don't halfway think your reward is something else. So you've got to decide what it is. And you know, in all in all honesty and reality, is what I do, I do for personal reward. And my personal reward is not how much money I make. And maybe I'm privileged enough to be able to say that money doesn't matter because I can eat three side meals a day and I have a roof over my head. So that I, I get and I understand. But my reward for me is changing the lives of other people. And I don't mean that in a philanthropic and uh, a way but i mean that in a, in a more practical way is that i like to see people grow so whether it's my children or my colleagues or my friends i like to see people do very well and i like to see the influence i have on people's lives so whether that's building buildings that they can use creating destinations that people have fun in just doing things in a great way um and my colleagues will tell you that one of my favorite sayings is if you can't do great things then do small things in a great way yeah um and i think i think that's very important um, there's there's also there's also another Igbo saying that mirrors that, and it basically says if you're hunting for elephant and you see chicken, make sure you eat the chicken whilst you keep on looking for the elephant. <laughs> so, so 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 that. But that's you don't to be sweeter if you say it's Igbo. <laughs> well, I'll, you know, maybe Oscar, maybe Igbo is to be sweeter than English. Miss White, Mister Leonard. Mr. Leonard, I mean, Mr. Who was it that was challenging you? <laughs> Mr. Oscar. Mr. Oscar. Neither can Oscar, by the way. Oscar ran an airline and, and never had one Igbo phrase in his airline. So so he 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 knows. But um I think I think um I think it's I think it's important. I think it's important. I have quite a few things that are dear to me. And 
you know, men in, in Nigeria where there's so many challenges and people ask why. Yes. Yes? We train ourselves at Landmark to ask why not. Yeah. The issue has to be why not? While other people are saying, oh, why? And they turn around because it's a challenge. We say, why not? And not every challenge that we take on, we succeed in, right? But you always learn something from taking on a challenge, right? Um, you know, a, a favorite saying of mine is the opportunity of a lifetime can only be realized in the lifetime of that opportunity. So, so there's no point seeing an opportunity then coming back saying, I'm not ready yet. And many, it happens to many people. I'm not ready to buy that place yet. I'm not ready to do this business yet. I'll do it when my children grow up or when this happens. But when you go back to do that opportunity, that opportunity is not the same opportunity, right? It wasn't, so the, the lifespan of that opportunity has moved. So it's important to take risks. You know, nothing in the world is given without taking risks. Um, when we leave our front doors, go to work, we're taking a risk. Um, and many people have taken a lot of risks during this COVID time. So risk is important, although it should be measured, right? Um, but but I, I think I think that's important. I, there's one of the things I, I have on the back of my wall in the office, and it, it basically says, if you want something you've never had, you've got to be prepared to do something you've never done. And uh, it was an old American president sure. that, that said it once. Um, so some of these things are the things that have sort of guided me, and I I think about them. As I said, you know, I have an Olympic mindset. I would I I always strive to win. I always strive to do well. I push myself to the limits. Um, pain is not something you should be afraid of. Pain just keeps on reminding you're human. And when you when you fail, it reminds you Absolutely. you're human. Yeah, when you make mistakes. Yes, absolutely. Wow. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. Pain shouldn't be something we should be scared of, neither is it failure. We, it's a reminder that we are human and we are no God. And that's, that leads to my, 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 my second to final question, which is where does, you know, I know now you've shared with us the principles, the insights, you know, where does God come into place in all of this? Because these days, some people don't even understand who God is anymore. They, they, they are so pictures of God. You know, some people is doing, they are doing, people are doing, you know, living carelessly and making life miserable for other people. And it's still God, you know, prodding their friends, the family, and it's still God. So to you, who is God and where, where, where is his position in all of this? So I was, I was brought up in a, in a very Christian Catholic family and, um, and I still remain Catholic. And so I'm not even going to pretend that I'm a Pentecostal Christian. I'm, I'm a deep Catholic. I'm, deep, I'm deeply Catholic. And and God, to me, I said earlier in the show that God rules in the lives of men, right? And I think men, I think yes. it's important yes. to you know when when people ask, well, what does God do? Why has this been allowed to happen? You know, God has a plan for everything, and we've got to decide what that plan is. But God, that plan will only come to being if we help it happen. Um, so I have a few principles, and these are principles of the Bible and the principles of the Testament, and some of the oldest ones, and I suppose one of the oldest ones is treat people the way you expect to be treated. Because mm -hmm. I've seen in so many instances, especially in Nigeria, in Africa, it happens a lot. We start meetings with a prayer, and then we spend the next three hours, mm. yeah, um, you know, committing Spicy. atrocities. Yeah, committing atrocities in the meeting, whether the, the, the people in the meeting are out of the meeting, and then you end with a prayer, and then you think that you're being you're being godly right because you prayed at the beginning you prayed at the end and it it simply doesn't make sense that's that's really that's the bottom line yes i think i think it's important to have the principles right and the the do good principles because at the gates of heaven you'll be treated the same way as you've decided how you're going to treat people um so from a commercial position i say i would never sell anything i can't buy myself and from a from a more mm. friendly position is I will never treat anyone the way I wouldn't expect to be treated. Mm. And those are my sort of fundamental principles. Um, and uh, mm. so that's that's where, where I, I do this. Uh, yeah. I like that. I like that. I will never buy what I can't use. I never sell what I can't use. So And that's, that's very critical. And I like the fact that you use that example that we pray at every meeting and we do all sorts during the meeting. So what are we saying? I like that. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. So, okay, someone is asking before I now finally ask my last question. Okay, Chichi says she's a family friend of yours. She's a very dear family friend. And thank you to all your friends. They've been online and I'm grateful. Thank you, guys. Every friend of Mr. Paul, I'm grateful 
Thank you, everyone, for coming online. You are all well appreciated. She said, how do you relax? I was going to ask that, too. So I'll but just she, change my last question. How do you relax? How do you have your leisure and all that? I know football is there, obviously. <laughs> your, your team, the that team, that team. You're not going to call their name. No, no, no good PR for them here. <laughs> That's fair. So, so we know football is there. What other things? What other things get get you relaxed? So I noticed I have a lot of family people call themselves my family friends. They're actually, my cousins. Okay, she, I saw I saw a message. Oh, okay. I'm, a, I'm a family friend. Okay, she's a very close cousin of mine. Um, Chichi is an extremely close cousin. Oh, Chichi's father is my you. mother's brother. Um, so I don't even know how, how I did oh, them you. on the call, but Chichi knows how I relax because um, I can tell a story of her, but I wouldn't embarrass her on this um, on this platform. Um, but that was part of my relaxation. And I, um, Chichi danced on the table, if you remember, but I, I wouldn't I wouldn't tell the story on a live platform. And um, how 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 do I relax? So, so one of the cornerstones of my business philosophy is is live work play business leisure lifestyle. Um, so I'm relaxed when I'm working and I'm doing business when I'm mm. playing. Um, so it's it's not really mm. a question of, I don't sort of take time out and, and relax and say, you know, let me rest. Um, I'm just comfortable and happy with what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. Having said that, you know, what I have to have to do deliberately over the years is take time out with the family just because of the fast paced life and the travel. Um, so one of the things we did do very early on is where we decided we'll go on holiday three times a year. So we we do go on holiday at every break of it. Obviously, COVID has happened. So we've we've missed both the Easter and, yeah. and the summer holidays. But we we did. Yeah. And the time because my children were all born in the UK. We did our holidays for five years in different African countries. So I'm always proud to sell people that my children have been to more African cities than most people who have lived in Africa all their lives. Um, because you know, we took, <laughs> we took we took them around to many different African countries, you know. Um, and you know, we don't we don't do five-star mm -hmm. holidays in my family. We we do real holidays, we stay with the people and understand understand the cities we go to. So I I relax doing that. I relax sort of learning new things. I relax. I'm a lifelong student, as I said. I, I read a lot. I watch a lot. I, I, I do like the fact that you said, people doing business, you relax. Why doing business? Because it's what you love to do. It's what, it's, it's who you are, your passion. And so it, yeah. you're having fun, even while, you know, making money. I like that. I like that. <laughs> I think everybody would love to do that. You'll be having fun while making money. That's, uh, that's well, beautiful. Do it. Thank you. Thank you so much. The sports people do it. I think Mr. Leonard is really on your case. Mr. Leonard is saying that any Arsenal fan <laughs> can, right. can never relax team. while watching. Leonard's a <laughs> team that hasn't won anything in four years. That's why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, is... Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Paul. As a random, please share final notes to the, to everyone on this show. We, we always say on the show that the day you realize your dream, the day you know this is what I want to do, that is your morning. You know, no matter the age, no matter the time or the location, as long as you can wake up and say, okay, I would love to do this and pursue this, then that is your morning. And so you still have your noon and your night, you know, to go through with you. So with you, sir, share with us as we round off in all your experiences. You have a fantastic relationship with your your friends and your your family friends, and I'm, I, I like that. It's it's it confirms all the research I've done about you. So share with us what what few words will you have to say to everyone listening right now? Um, I suppose I said most of them, but I'll sort of recount the ones that are dear to me. And you know, one of them is you know be a lifelong student. And um, the second the second is is effectively, if you want to progress in life, and it's one of the things on the back of my wall, if you want to progress in life, make sure others around you progress first. Because if everybody's happy, I found out very early on in my 27 year marriage, that if my wife is not happy, I'm not happy, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it was, and, and that's just a, a microcosm of this whole thing. Basically, if people around you are happy, you're happy. If people around you are not happy, you're not happy. So I try to make my colleagues, my friends, my family, Happy all the time, so I think that I think that's incredibly important. Um, I've said I've said throughout the show about that whole philosophy of developing an Olympic mindset. I think excellence is a choice. Um, you can either decide you don't want to be yeah. excellent and decide to be excellent, right? But it really is a choice. So I think having that Olympic mindset, you know, when people say, "Well, I was almost there," it doesn't count. You know, if you've ever missed a flight or yeah. missed a train or missed a bus, you understand what I'm talking about. Because if you miss it by one second. You have the same penalty of it yeah. as the person who missed it by one day, right? Yeah. 
right? So, so if you want to get on that bus flight or train, right? Um, then make sure you get on it. And that's why I say, you know, have an Olympic mindset. You have, every day is a hundred meter race and you have to be striving for gold. Um, so so I, I suppose those those are the, the key lessons in my life that I've tried to, I've tried to sort of live with, I've tried to share with, with friends and colleagues. Um, you know, um, I don't know who's, who, how many people on the show have read the book, um, Good to Great. Yeah, but I think, you know, it basically goes, yeah. it says, you know, good is the biggest enemy of great. Because most people who feel they're, they've already succeeded or they've yeah. done enough, right, stops them from being excellent. And I think, I think that glass ceiling, we've got to shatter it all, mm. all through. Um, and I think it's very important. And those of us who, yeah. who lived in other countries outside Nigeria, especially um, countries that have been ruled by, by white people, yeah. I, think, I think it's quite a time now. The changes we're seeing now are real. And I think we owe ourselves that opportunity to ensure that not just black people, but black businesses begin to thrive um, outside black countries um, by patronizing them properly and just making sure we pursue and push them to, to excellence. And, um, and uh, the last thing I want to say is because we're in, we're in these you. very strange times, this pandemic, um, you know, I think it's important to yes. be safe. I know there's so many things going around, but yes. you know, this is real. I live with a doctor who's actually a public health uh, professional. So, um, you know, this thing is real. Yeah, and, uh, I think it's it's here to stay for some time. So so be careful and um, and pursue your dreams in a way that without restraint. True, true. Thank you so much, Mr. Paul. Thank you. It's been amazing having you on the show. I don't even feel like I'm talking to a CEO. I feel I'm talking to like my elder brother <laughs> because that's how <laughs> that's how relaxed I you know I was uh, I'll be earlier today that. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of questions do you know. Group CEO is not just my mind. It's not just what you get on the street. You know, I have to be, I have to, you know, know the questions to ask. But as we got talking, I found out that it's just as if you are right beside me talking to my elder brother, and it it confirms everything I've so so much heard about you. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm grateful. You know, for your sense of humor, I like the sense of humor. It's been amazing, and you have amazing friends. Shout out to every one of them that came online, Mr. Leonard, Chichi, Mr. Oscar. I appreciate Ogechi. Every one of you, thank you so much for the support. It, it shows that Mr. Mr. Paul is an amazing friend to every one of you, and you all did it by sharing this moment with him. And to all my friends as well that came online, thank. you. Mr. Paul, I am grateful. I thank you so much. And I want to use the opportunity to thank um, Tobechi. Tobechi is my friend's younger brother. He made, you know, I reach out to him that I have you on the list of people I would love to, to hear their stories. And he told me that Mr. Paul is on to a fault. I'm sure he's going to say yes. You know, though I still have to go through the right process. Shout out to Ye Wande, your, your personal assistant, amazing young lady. And I, I like you said, now I see why you believe so much in the youth. You know, it's promising to see that, you know, they understand the principles of life and they appreciate relationship. And I here today we chat like as if you and they, like uh, we've seen each other. Thank you, Mr. Paul, for honoring my invitation. Thank you for making it easy to reach out to you. And your story is amazing. I'm encouraged, I'm inspired, I'm motivated. And I pray that all this, your the seeds that you're thrown in, and the business and in Africa as a whole. I like the fact that you are spreading the wind, you know, of your business, of your empire, building it you know, all over Africa and external world as well. We thank you. We thank you for making us proud in Nigeria. We thank you. We say shout out to Madame, the doctor herself. We say thank you for allowing him. Thank you for, for, for making him, you know, reach out to us as well. We say God bless her. Thank you so much, sir. I'm grateful. So, so grateful. I'm so privileged and I'm honored. And I think God bless you, sir. I will Thank reach out to you after the show. Have a fantastic evening. Thank you. My regards to the family, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. It's been a pleasure to be on the show. I appreciate it. Thank you. Please, everyone, please, a round of applause for Mr. Paul Uwani Bay. Please, shout out to him. Thank you, sir. Have a lovely evening, sir. Have a great evening too. Thank you very much. And thanks everyone for listening. And thanks Bye. Toby and Bye. Yewan Bay for putting this together. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. Bye. Bye. Bye.
Thank you everyone for coming on the show. I'm grateful, I'm honored. It's amazing to have Mr. Paul on the show. If you know him, you will know that he's really a great privilege. He's a man of the people. You can see that all his friends, every one of you came online, you know, to support and to show love and confirm all the great work he has been doing in business and in building relationship. And he's a proud, you know, he's a proud African man. And let's, let us give him that, let us support that his team because of Mr. Paul. Okay, congrats to us now because of Mr. Paul, only because of Mr. Paul. We we'll say congrats to you guys on this your victory at last, finally. For anywhere you hear United, please take a bow. Please note that when you hear United, take a bow. I stand with United forever. No one so I am I am a true United daughter. <laughs> Thank you everyone for coming online. Please stay safe, keep social distance, be real. Like we always say on the show, the day you wake up to your dreams is your morning. Keep running the dream. Keep fulfilling purpose. And I know God will see you through. And whatever your heart desire, the Lord will make it happen for you. He can do it. He can do it for Mr. Paul. He can do it for you. There is nothing impossible. And, you know, we always say, Jesus, get connected. Stay true, you know, and be who you are. And I know God will make it happen for you. Thank you so much. Join me next week. I have an, an amazing guest for next week. You would definitely want to stay online. To hear him. Go to my YouTube channel. Please go to my YouTube channel. Kindly subscribe if you are yet to, so that you can get a lot of when I put up new videos, just like Mr. Paul's video interview. Great insights, great things to learn from him. Like, comment, and share your feedback with me as well, so that I can, you know, learn and become better on the show. Have a fantastic evening, everyone, and regards to your family. Stay safe. God bless you. Bye, everyone.